Want to start a YouTube channel for flipping furniture but don't really know how? Let's talk about it. Today's video is all about the do's and don'ts and what I wish I knew when I started mine. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. So in this episode, I am going to be telling you guys all about how to start your own YouTube channel for furniture flipping. A couple videos ago, I was working on this cabinet right here and I wasn't able to show you guys the finished product of the inside. So while I am giving you guys all these tips, I am going to be making over the inside of this cabinet and showing you guys the results. All right, uh, so let's get to it. First off guys, if you haven't checked out this flip yet, please make sure to go check it out. It is so much fun and there are so many good little repairs and super satisfying tape moments. So make sure to check that out after this video. Anyways, let's talk about misconceptions about starting a YouTube channel. A lot of people think that to start a YouTube channel, you have to have all the right equipment, you have to have the technology such as an editing software, and then you have to have the hardware like a microphone, camera, whatever the case may be. But that's honestly not true at all. I'm a year and a half in and I'm still using my phone for filming. I am editing with iMovie that comes with the Mac. It's the free software. I'm making do with what I have. That being said, once your channel actually starts to grow and you start making money off of it, you can start upgrading your setup and invest money into things like camera equipment, microphone, lighting, all that sort of stuff so that you can make higher quality content. But this can be done gradually over time as your channel grows. Another misconception that people seem to have is that you need the perfect name before you start. You have to have the perfect brand and you have to know exactly which direction you want to go in order to start a YouTube channel, but that is also not the case. There are a lot of furniture flippers out there on YouTube and coming up with an original name that is unique and cool and searchable can be pretty challenging, but I say prioritize making content and worry about getting the perfect name name later. Yeah, you'll have to do some rebranding later once you find the perfect name, but honestly, it is totally worth it in comparison to just not starting at all. People too often get obsessed with the little things and let those small, tiny details stop them from starting something, and then they just never end up doing it. So I say focus on the big stuff, get those videos out there, get that content out there, and then figure out the small details later. While we're on the topic of being in a very very saturated market, you know, coming up with an original name and all that sort of stuff. Another big misconception when starting a YouTube channel is that it is too saturated of a market, you're never going to get noticed, all that sort of stuff. Not true. No one does the thing that you do. No one. I mean, sure, you paint furniture the way that somebody else does it. People have their favorite channels, not only because of the work that they do, because of the pieces that they make, but also because of the person that is on the screen. Think about all your favorite YouTubers, the channels that you go back to and watch over and over again. Not only do they probably have great content, but I'd be willing to bet that they probably have a personality that you actually relate to or enjoy watching or find entertaining, and that's something that no one else can give but you. You are the only person that can offer what you have, and there is something out there for everyone, so there is most likely going to be some people, if not a lot of people, that enjoy the way that you present your specific content. Let's move on to some things that are absolutely necessary for you to start your YouTube channel. So the first thing that I recommend having is obviously some sort of camera, whether that be on your phone or a professional camera or an iPad or whatever the case may be, you do unfortunately have to have uh, something to record your videos with in order to make videos. Next up is some sort of editing software. So I actually know a couple of people who make their furniture flipping videos on an iPad or on their phone and they film the stuff on their phone and then edit with the film editing software that comes with the phone. I think it's a phone version of iMovie. It is super tedious to do on the phone. I highly recommend getting some sort of computer or, you know, iPad or something to edit on. But if this is what you're starting with, it's what you're starting with and it is 
way better than nothing. Something else that is not necessarily like a must-have for starting a YouTube channel, but just something that I personally highly recommend is a Canva account. Canva is a website that helps you do all sorts of stuff like Instagram layouts, YouTube thumbnails, and they actually have editing software on there. And it's a monthly subscription, I think of like $6 or something, or maybe $12, I'm not really sure. But I, I cannot recommend it enough. This may sound like an ad, but honestly, like I am not being paid by them. It's not like a promotional thing or anything. I just genuinely love this app and this website. It is so cool. You can have it on your phone or on your computer and it has layouts and all sorts of resources for you. So I highly recommend if you can, if it's within your budget, even if it's not, they do have a free version of their platform. I make all of my thumbnails with it every single one. And it helps you edit TikToks, it helps you with a bunch of stuff. Anyways, while we're on the topic of TikTok and social media, let's talk about how to grow your channel when you are first starting. I think it comes to no one's surprise that TikTok is one of the best ways to get your information out there. So if you are a YouTuber, you can make shorts of your videos. Actually, you can make them on Canva and then you can post them on TikTok and you can direct people straight to your YouTube channel. It allows you to put links at the top of your profile. And I always say like, make sure to check out my new video, check out the full video on YouTube. One of my videos went like a little bit viral and I got so much more traffic to my YouTube channel because of just that one video on TikTok. Another great way that helped me actually very early on in my YouTube channel was joining a group that constantly has challenges. As soon as I started getting involved in these challenges, that is when my channel really started growing. So if you see someone who's doing a challenge, if you see one of your favorite YouTubers doing a challenge, ask them, leave a comment and see if there's a way that you can join the group. Something that is super important when it comes to growing your channel is consistency. For me, I like to post every week, but I know some of my friends who have grown exponentially in the past year have post even sometimes twice a week. It is grueling, it is a lot of work. So before you get into it, please make sure that this is something that you are ready for because it is a lot of work and sometimes the payoff isn't until like months after you start. But if you are already decided that this is something that you wanna do, I highly, highly, highly cannot recommend enough posting at least once a week. And this also goes for growing an audience on Instagram or TikTok. You wanna make sure that you are consistent. I recently saw this channel. He was a an Instagram flipper. He went from like 3,000 followers to almost 100,000 followers in a couple of months because he posted daily reels on Instagram and people ate that up. And now he has a YouTube channel and immediately already has thousands of subscribers because he had a lot of his Instagram followers come over from Instagram to YouTube to see what he does. It works. Believe me, consistency is key. Let's talk a little bit about something that not really everyone thinks about when starting a YouTube channel. Thumbnails and intros. I know when I started out, I didn't really think about what makes a good intro, what really makes a good thumbnail. Like I knew generally that a thumbnail was important, but I didn't really think about what makes a good thumbnail. And for me, a good way to do this is to put yourself down the rabbit hole. Go on YouTube and see what thumbnails you click on and screenshot each thumbnail that you click on and see what those thumbnails have in common. What makes them stand out from the other thumbnails that you didn't click? And from there, see if there's a through line that you notice. See if there's something like text or font or the picture, whatever the case may be. See what through lines happen between each thumbnail that you personally click on. And from there, once you kind of figure out exactly what you see in each thumbnail, then you can go forward to your own thumbnails and try to replicate replicate what it is about those thumbnails that you liked. And of course, Canva is wonderful for this exact thing. Let's talk intros. This is something that I have only recently, and by recently, I literally mean this 
video have thought about. I've been doing my research for the past week or so on how to make a good intro, and I'm honestly still trying to figure it out. Based off of the videos that I watched, you want your intro to pose a question or at least show a little bit of the information that you are going to be providing in your video. Now with that in mind, I encourage you to go back and watch the intro that I put to this video. Not only did I show you a little bit of the video itself by putting little clips and montages of parts that are in this video, but I also briefly covered the topics that we'd be discussing in the video. The reason why I started looking into this at all was because I started looking at my analytics on my YouTube channel, and I highly recommend that when you start your YouTube channel and start to get traction and a little bit more views, I highly recommend looking at the analytics. They tell you a lot of information about what's going on with your channel and where people are exiting your video or not watching your video. And I found that a lot of people stopped watching my video within the first couple of seconds, which tells me that I need a better intro. Something to also be aware of is your titles. Make sure that they're not too clickbaity or else people are gonna start clicking on it and immediately realize that the video isn't about what the title says it's about. And then they're gonna move on to the next video and become uninterested and your video will lose traction. Some things that help with traction, however, are encouraging your audience to do things like like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. Speaking of, if you're liking this video and find the information valuable, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and do all those things. Another great way to promote yourself and to promote your channel is to find a way to segue into other videos. So if you're covering a topic, but you know you have a different video that covers the topic better, be like, oh yeah, if if you want to know more about this process, go check out this video, keeping people on your channel, consistently going to other videos, making a little roadmap through your channel for people to stay on your channel and keep those views coming. Something else that I highly recommend doing is starting a Patreon really early on. This is something that I didn't do in the beginning, and let me tell you why. I thought that my channel was way too small to have anything like a Patreon, but the thing is, there's no such thing as a channel being too small for something like that. People are going to want to support you if the content that you're putting out is worth supporting. And you never know when or who is going to want to be a patron and support you, so you might might as well start early and just give people the option because like I said, you never know. And the reason I say Patreon instead of a YouTube membership program is because a Patreon you can have right away, whereas a YouTube program you have to be monetized in order to have access to that. And a Patreon is just a way to have early access to what is usually a late game benefit. Something else that I wish I did earlier on is be shameless about your self-promotion. You put a lot of hard work and let's face it, YouTube doesn't get really good money-wise until you're in like the upper echelon of YouTube creators. So make sure to keep encouraging people to support you in any way that makes sense for them, whether that's liking, subscribing, or following you on other platforms, or by joining your membership. Speaking of which, thank you to all of my members. You are amazing. Your support genuinely means so much to me. And if any of you are interested in joining my membership program, all you have to do is go onto my profile and click this join button. And there you can check out all the different tiers as well well as their benefits and help me make more content for you guys. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video and found it useful and are gonna go forth and start your own YouTube channels. If you guys would like to see more content like this on the business side of things or have an idea for a topic that you would like to see me make a video on, make sure to leave it in the comments and we'll see if we can't make that happen for you. Until next time, stay flippin'.